we lie, we lie. We back at it again with another video. It's your boy, Young Leaky, stepping in for the check-in. Today, 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 I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, a mental model that I feel is very valuable for creatives, entrepreneurs, product managers, designers, anyone who makes a living off of their ideas. And that mental model is very simple, but I think very transformative, and it's basically called cataloging. Um, so if you're a creative, well, let's actually even take it a step back. Like Gen Z as a generation, as a demographic, like millennials, these people of the internet, we're multi-hyphenates. So you'll often find that people don't define themselves by one box. Like people aren't just a banker or they aren't just a photographer or they aren't just a stylist. Like they're like, no, I do this and I have a startup on the side and I have this other side hustle. And side hustle culture is a really key part of how our generation and like our generation's economy is actually going, right? So people already have like multiple projects, 13 different projects going on. There's actually this dope designer from New York who has like this, uh, this really dope rug design. It's like, I got like 13 different projects going on right now, right? So that's very common because people um, have a wide variety of interests and they're always creating. So what that means is that you're going to have multiple priorities at any given moment and that can get hard to manage. Um, and then as you're coming up with ideas, you can sometimes find yourself going down a rabbit hole and then going through like this discouragement loop. So tell me if this has ever happened to you before, right? You're chilling, you're taking a walk, you're talking with your friends, and all of a sudden you get an idea for a new feature, a new business, or you realize that Netflix would have been so much better if they just added this, or you realize like, oh, this is the exact thing I need to do to take my, my clothing line to the next level, right? You get some stroke of inspiration, right? And then immediately you're so inspired and enthusiastic by like, yo, this is the best idea ever. Oh my God. You go and you start working on it immediately. And then you find out that it's probably going to take a lot more time and effort than you thought. You got all these other projects that you already had going on. So it's like, why did you even take up this new one? And it gets a little bit, ugh. Right, And then you end up just giving up or you end up losing steam and burning out and then you never actually get around to the thing and then you, now you get mad at yourself when you see somebody else who actually took the idea and did something with it, made some money, got some traction and you're like, oh my God, I had that idea a while ago. We're like, dang, if I had just stuck with it, I would have had X, Y, Z by now. Has something like that ever happened to you? Like that type of loop, right? Well. I noticed that was happening to me all the time because I'm always getting like strokes of inspiration for different ways that products can be improved or different ways to add value and remix stuff. Um, but I would always find myself like, you know, I would get so excited by ideas and I love brainstorming so much that I could just find myself doing this for hours and that I would actually get nothing out of it but like being like, oh, I shoulda, coulda, woulda. And so what I started doing instead was actually cataloging these ideas and not feeling this pressure to go after everything at the same time. And this is something that I learned a lot just through working in tech because there's often these environments that are highly ambiguous where lots of things are going on and your challenge is to think through like what do you prioritize when and why? What's the most important thing to do out of all the different things that you could be doing at this moment, right? And um, it's actually a good friend of mine. His name is Ayush. Check him out on Twitter, Ayush Sood, S-O-O-D. Um, he, like, he's an entrepreneur, he's an eng manager, and I was reading one of his interviews and he told me like, that he had like a journal of over 700 ideas written now, right? While he was like running this one company that ended up going well, um, he had like 700 ideas long. And I was like, dang, bro, if this guy has 700 business ideas, high quality already built out, imagine how much like more lethal he is just because he has that catalog of just like knowledge and IP that he's standing on, 
right? And so when I thought about it, I'm like, man, I feel like I've had 700 ideas. Like, ideas are a dime a dozen, but they're also really valuable. And so that's why I'm like, all right, well, let me just start documenting things as they come. And you don't need to feel this pressure to go after it immediately. And then I started realizing why, like, this simple practice, it not only helps you save stress, it helps you avoid burnout. It helps you actually continue the positive momentum of actually getting inspired. Because that inspiration is a good thing. That feeling where you're like, oh my God, this is an opportunity. This is something that is overlooked. This is something that is interesting. That's a valuable feeling, but it's like, everything is about timing, especially with like early stage stuff and startups. And so now you take that feeling and you can continue the positive momentum of that. Right, And then you realize when it comes to creating, designing, creating products, experiences, content, references are actually a key part of the creative process because creativity as a whole is just about connecting ideas in new ways. Right, I think Steve Jobs actually talks about that where it's like creativity is just about connecting ideas. So the concept of references is key. Like anytime I'm working on a project, anytime I'm designing something, I'm designing a website, I'm designing a campaign, I'm always doing references, right? Like references help you narrow down like what your creative lane is gonna be because by saying what you want something to be like and what you want it not to be like, you can kind of like find the unique space where you exist, right? And so like, this concept of just keeping track of your ideas, um, it not only helps you stay inspired and stay motivated, but it also helps you in your creative process because of the references. And then it also helps you a lot when it comes to like, um, if you ever get writer's block or you ever get stuck on something, right? Where you're not making the traction you wanna make, like that's when you can go back to your, your idea bank and then boom, make a deposit or like make a withdrawal and see, oh, What's some, what's some good inspo that I can get from this? You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's a really key, uh, key benefit that I found when it comes to doing that. And so I do this with ads. Anytime I see a good Instagram or Facebook ad, I'm screen recording it, I'm screenshotting it, and I'm actually putting it in my idea bank, I'm emailing it to myself, and I'm now seeing like what makes this good. So when I go and create marketing strategies, I can go back through my references and analyze them and invent new ideas. I do this with websites, products, and content. Any good content that I see, good design that I see, I catalog it, I see what makes it good, and I send it to myself for future reference. Um, and I also do this with like different people that you can actually work with, right? And so a lot of people ask like, oh, how did you get a team of people to work with you? Well, I was cataloging different design styles and different people for so long that boom, when it was actually time to work on a project, you can actually find uh, the remote team or like the, the task force to get it done the right way. Um, so yeah, man, I think this is a dope concept. I think it'll save us a lot of burnout. It'll help us in our process overall. References are key. Um, and if you're anyone who's just in the business of ideas, like I think just the concept of mood boarding, prioritization, timing, and just making that a priority, I think that like that's, that's something that we always have to think about and it'll help us be more effective. Um, and it'll help us take advantage of that. And you know, like, I've seen this done successfully, like one very popular person on Twitter that you guys should follow, Dave Perel, David Perel. Um, he's all about writing and creating content and like, how do you make a community and impact a profit off of like your ideas by writing them. Um, but he has like this massive Trello of like 200, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of articles um, and content that he's just scraped across the web. And so when he's writing articles, he's able to pump out so much volumes of content because he can literally just scan a document, grab a paragraph from this that sounds interesting, connect it to another idea here, grab a paragraph from there. He spends maybe 30 minutes adding a wrapper to connect the whole story, and then boom, he has a new fire article that goes crazy viral on Twitter, right? And so like, when I saw that, I'm just like, wow, like this simple concept of keeping your records and mood boarding and all that stuff is, is key. So um, that's been helping me a lot. It's helped me a ton. I now have it in, uh, and like I have a list that's growing and it just makes me more excited to wanna work on them. It makes me excited to work hard and get to the point where I can even pursue all of these ideas very openly and very freely without worrying about anything. So um, yeah, man. 
I want to share that concept with you guys. I hope you liked it. I hope it was a, a helpful mental model. Ooh, y'all see that? Oh no, oh don't do it, baby. Oh. <laughs> yeah, man, I hope you liked the video. I hope you liked the mental model. I hope you get something out of it. Um, yeah, I think mental models are key. And so without any further ado, we just gonna end the video right here because it has gone on much longer than expected. Uh, but shout out my guy Ayush, shout out my big homie Aaron, that's my roommate. He actually inspired this conversation yesterday because we were doing some wicked brainstorming. Um, and yeah, own your power, give back, and then leave no stone unturned. Black Lotus.